In this problem, we have a circular coil with a radius of 25 centimeters. And we have a magnetic field that is perpendicular to the face of the coil. And we need to calculate the magnetic flux in this coil. The magnetic flux is represented by this symbol. It's B times A. And this is the component of the magnetic field that is perpendicular to the plane of the coil. And so for this problem, the magnetic flux is going to be B times the area of the circle, which is pi r squared. So the magnetic field is 20 tesla, and the radius is 25 centimeters, which is 0.25 meters squared. So the magnetic flux is 3.93 tesla times square meters, which you could simply represent that as a Weber. So one Weber is one tesla times one square meter. So this is the standard unit for the magnetic flux. So that's the answer. Or you could leave it like that if you want. Number two. A magnetic field of 30 tesla is directed parallel to the face of a square coil. Calculate the magnetic flux. So let's say this is the square coil. And this time, the magnetic field is not in perpendicular to the face of the coil. Rather, it's parallel to the face of the coil. So it's going in that direction. What's the magnetic flux? Because it's not going through the surface of the square coil, rather it's just like passing by it the flux is going to be zero. The flux is equal to the component that's perpendicular to the coil times the area. And there is no perpendicular component. So therefore, that part is zero. So the flux is zero in this case, or zero Weber's. The perpendicular component, it turns out, is B cosine theta. So you can represent the flux equation like this. The magnetic flux is B times A times cosine of theta. And so what's theta? Theta is the angle between the normal line, which is perpendicular to the surface, and the angle, I mean, and B. So this angle here between the magnetic field vector and the normal line, that's theta. So in this example, theta is 90. So we have 30 tesla, that's the magnetic field, times an area of... 0.10 meters squared, that's length times width, times cosine of 90 degrees, since they're uh, perpendicular to each other. Now, cosine of 90 is 0, and so that's why the whole thing is 0, so the flux is 0. And the last problem, the magnetic field was parallel to the normal line, and so the angle between them is zero degrees. And cosine of zero degrees is one. And so that's why the magnetic flux in the last problem was simply B times A, because this was completely like perpendicular to the face of the coil. Now let's move on to number three. So our goal in this problem is to calculate the magnetic flux through each square. So you need to know which angle to use when dealing with these types of problems. So the magnetic flux is going to equal the magnetic field times the area of the coil times cosine of theta. Now keep in mind theta is between the normal line and the magnetic field. So in the first problem on the left, theta is 40 degrees. Now what about on the right? What's theta? So here's the normal line and here is the magnetic field. So theta is complementary to that angle. It's 90 minus 30, which is 60 degrees. So make sure you choose the right angle. Otherwise, you can get the wrong answer. So for the first one, it's going to be the magnetic field, which is 10 tesla, multiplied by the area. Since we're dealing with a square, the area is just going to be length times width. So 50 centimeters is 0.5 meters. So 0.5 times 0.5 and then multiplied by cosine of 40 degrees. So
So you should get 0.766 Webers for the magnetic flux of the first example. Now go ahead and try the next example. Let's use the exact same formula. So B is still going to be 10. The area is still going to be 0.5 times 0.5 which is 0.25 square meters. But this time we're going to use cosine of 60 as opposed to cosine 30. And cosine 60 is a half. A half times 0.25 is 0.125. And then times 10 will give us a magnetic flux of 1.25 Weber's or Tesla times square meters. So now you know how to calculate the magnetic flux through a surface. It's simply the magnetic field times the area times cosine theta, where the angles between the magnetic field and the normal line. So just don't forget that. So thanks for watching.